Uh, good afternoon. I have not yet heard the issue of illegal immigration presented or brought up by anybody. Uh, when I first moved into California in 1960, it was a primarily white state, primarily Caucasian, some blacks, some Hispanics. I left it 11 months ago, although I wanted to leave it when I was nine years old. It is now a primarily brown state. It is primarily brown because you have the influx of Mexican nationals whom the federal government refuses to do anything about, even though this is a national security issue. In my assessment of what's happening in Wyoming, we are ripe for the overtake. What really happens is you have a repopulation. A lot of the Mexican nationals feel that parts of Wyoming, California, Nevada, Arizona belong to them because they lost some of that during the Mexican-American War. They are for their people. They come here, people say they're just here to work. It's not true. In great numbers, they take over. My sister retired as an educator in California. Her classroom consisted of 98% Spanish speaking only. What happened then to the 2% who spoke English? They got the short end of the stick. When you ponder what happened with 9-11, that too was an immigration-related issue. We had people, foreigners, who came here under visas, they overstayed, they lapsed over into the status of a legal alien. When I was stopped uh, perhaps a month ago by a state trooper for speeding, I asked him what he could do if he found that someone had absolutely no documents, no driver's license, nothing. There's not much that he can do. He can call ICE, but they're not going to show up. What happens with this is you can have a terrorist come into the United States, and Middle Easterners are training with drug cartels in Mexico. I've been to the borders of California, Arizona, and Texas as a Minuteman, have seen people coming over with backpacks, Mexicans mostly, because they're functioning as drug meals. It's all out of control. Our national forests, you have drug cartel members who have operations going there and people have to stay away from that. What discussion, if any, have you had about securing Wyoming from this threat which is imminent? I know the federal government says that that's their domain, that's a federal issue. Well, so is bank robbery, but they always involve our law personnel in that. We need to have the means of addressing the security issues. Number one, to preserve the culture that we have, which is American, to preserve Wyoming's um, own culture, and to protect our families from what is a verifiable threat. And some of that can be done by denying benefits to people who are here illegally. I would hope that you would have this discussion. I was on probably the only bill that has been brought forth about illegal immigration. I think it was even been, I'm trying to remember what day, three years ago. When I first got in the legislature, what I wanted to know, I, that was going to be my first bill. What is the official language spoken in Wyoming? On the book, it is English. But then the federal government comes in and says, you cannot. Uh, discriminate because they can't talk so then we have EEL the English language learners and so forth so the federal government is just telling us how to run that and then the bill that we had uh, was that anybody that hired an illegal immigrant would be punished pretty severely and all they had to do is check these things, and if they had their photo, their green card, whatever it was, driver's license, if they had it and it was verifiable, they would, and even if it was figured out they were phony, if they had it, they were exempt. You can, I mean, that sounds pretty easy, doesn't it? You can imagine the ACLU and every minority group showed up at that committee meeting and was just thinking, we're the quality state. You ever heard that before? Um, we cannot be doing this. And it failed in committee. So 
I think that's the last time anything's been tried on that. It's a worry to everybody, and until we get more conservative folks in the Wyoming legislature, we're kind of hamstrung. We all right, this is an opportunity for me to ask you all a question. We have E-Verify. Um, we could put the employers in charge of immigration by doing E-Verify. Um, what do we think about that? Do we want to make the employers the immigration officials of Wyoming? Or do we want to mandate E-Verify or not? Um, as Alan said, uh, as long as someone comes to you with documents, they, they can have all different names and numbers on them, but they're a set of documents. You've been shown documents. You cannot infer that this is an illegal and that these documents are fraudulent. And that's one other thing about Real ID. All it takes is one fraudulent document to get through the system, and it's totally worthless. So, E-Verify, on the table, what do we think? No. 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 Big problem with E-Verify is it basically makes business owners guilty until proven innocent.